Today we're going to replace this traditional legacy uh, Faria gauge. It's the Chesapeake Black model. Um, if you have the same one, uh, same style in your boat, these are the Chesapeake Black style with the chrome ring. And if you want to get any of your gauges replaced, that's the one you want to look for. If your gauges look like this, the black face, white and blue lines, and the chrome uh, outline. People run into the same issue with uh, boats that are a few years old, or some of the new ones even. Your speedometer will stop functioning or only work over certain speeds or be slow to respond. And most of these speedometers are made by a company called Faria. And uh, they recently, over the last few years, have also started making the GPS versions of the same exact gauges. And it still works. Um, these work with the uh, sensor on the tail end that uh, senses the, the water pressure going through it and uh, then translates that into a speed that it shows on your speedometer. If you're going just a few miles an hour, it doesn't even register a speed. Um, as you can tell down there at the bottom, um, you've got the, the first line starting at around uh, 10 miles an hour, so it's not even very accurate um, under, I'd say, 25 miles an hour. We're going to replace this traditional speedometer that has the uh, water pressure sensor on the transom with a GPS driven one that does not have any sort of sensor, it just has an internal GPS sensor. And that's this guy here. If you look at the difference, so this one, the first notch there is 10 miles an hour. You really don't get any sort of real resolution up until you hit 20 miles an hour. Uh, you can tell this one has nice even lines all the way through from zero to 60 miles an hour even at the lower end you should get pretty good resolution as far as what speed you're actually going the speed sensor is inside these guys um, they're going to mount exactly the same as the old one just make sure you get the correct gauge to match what you already have in the boat um, as you can tell this is the the same size so make sure you get the same size as well. These are four inch gauges that are in my boat. There's also a five inch variation to these speedometers. So make sure you're getting the correct one. And when they're talking about four inch and five inch, they're, they're talking about the diameter here, not the hole cutout. The hole cutout is about 3.3 uh, 3 inches, three and a quarter, 3.3 3 inches in diameter where, where the mounting hole is. The outside diameter of the gauge here is gonna be four inches or, or larger one is five inches. We're going to get this installed and uh, go through the steps, switching it out from the old speedometer and show you how it works. Now, once you have the two nuts off of these two studs, you can see that the... Uh... Now, once you have the nuts off of this stud and this other stud back here, you can see this bracket is loose and it comes out the back. This is the bracket that is a pressure fit once those nuts are pulling on those studs and the actual gauge is loose. I'm gonna pull it out from the front and then uh, pull the wires off and see if I've got enough slack to pull this nut off. Now I've got the gauge pulled out here. As you can see the white with red stripe wire is up here. The yellow wire is here. Yellow wire on uh, most modern boats from the 90s, maybe mid 80s and up is gonna be your ground and the white is gonna be your power. So I'm gonna pull these two off. I can't see the back from here and the writing on there, but I'm gonna pull these two off, remember where they were, and then I'm, I'm gonna check the labels on those two pins to make sure that uh, they're put onto the new gauge correctly. Now here's the back of the old gauge. My yellow wire was here, which was the negative, uh, and this was the positive lead. There's no labels there on these two terminals. So we'll check the new one and see if there's labels for positive and negative on the new gauge. Now this new gauge, this is the back of the new gauge, has four posts. One is for your constant battery feed that is gonna be um, constantly 12 volts as long as your batteries are on. That one's your ground. It's going to be ground directly to your um, grounding block um, or to your battery. Uh, this one here, if you can see it, it says SIG. That's this terminal here. That's signal from your ignition. 
if you want the gauge to only power on when your key is turned on, then uh, you should have that one powered by your ignition circuit. Make sure you grab one of the wires that switch 12 volt um, that's off when you have the key turned off and uh, on when you have, uh, and, and it's feeding 12 volts when you have the key turned on. And then there's a fourth terminal uh, back here, if you see that one, this one here, and that's for your lights. Um, so that one should be powered whenever you have your interior light switch on that lights up your gauges on your gauge cluster. Um, or if they're powered on all the time, just wire it the same so that it turns on along with the rest of your gauges. So four terminals. Again, you've got constant battery, 12 volt, as long as the battery switches on, your ground, your signal wire from the ignition circuit, or you can wire this the same as your battery if you want, and then your, um, your uh, light signal for your gauge cluster lights. Again, on some boats, that's powered on all the time. On some boats, it's switched on separately with the interior lights. So make sure they're wired correctly. And then uh, as soon as you have your wires figured out, we can get it mounted and wired up and we should be good to test it. Now I've got the new gauge mounted. Uh, this is the bracket that came with the new gauge, the backing bracket. And you can see the four studs there. I've got one washer underneath each uh, nut and then a nut securing each of the studs and I don't have any wires connected yet. This is the stud that does not have a wire connected. These are the three that will have a battery ground and signal wire connected. And then up here at the top is the one for the lighting for the gauge cluster to turn on and off. So now that I've got it mounted firmly, next thing I'm gonna do is get the wiring done. So now I've got everything wired up. The uh, signal for the light uh, the dash light's coming on. It was a push connector, so I went ahead and put that on. Uh, this one is the ground. The ground was a push-on connector. I switched it out, I cut it off, and I put uh, a eyelet connector on there and put that on the ground post. And then these two here, this post and this one, are the ignition and battery wires. Um, I wanted to have both of them connected to um, ignition to come on only when I have the ignition on and I didn't want a signal going to the battery so what I did was take those two create a little Y uh, with a butt splice connector and then I took this and use another butt splice connector to connect it to the ignition wire that runs to all the gauges so now we've got everything wired up got it all tightened down you want to make sure none of the connectors are touching you see there's a good gap between this positive terminal and the ground, good gap between these two as well, and the light uh, sensing, uh, the light signal connector is not touching anything else either. So we should be good to go to test it. We're gonna power on the ignition and make sure everything functions. Okay, now let's give it a shot, make sure everything works. So when I turn the ignition key, what this should do is sweep all the way to the end, all the way back, and then it'll go to, okay, now let's give it a shot. So when I turn the ignition key on, what should happen is this needle should sweep all the way to the end, all the way back to zero, and then it should go to five miles an hour, and it'll sit at five until it picks up a GPS signal. Right now we're in covered uh, storage where our boat is parked, so I'm guessing we won't pick up a GPS signal since there's a tin roof above us, but let's make sure everything else works correct. Here we go. And that's it. That's the startup sequence. It does the self check, make sure everything functions correctly. And again, if you notice, uh, compared to the old gauge, the uh, resolution down here at the bottom is very granular so you can actually tell what speeds are going at the lower end of the scale which is most of where we spend our time we're not zooming around all the time um, to compare there's the old one and below 20 miles an hour there really is no resolution and 
uh, all, while we're on the water, this thing is completely useless under 20 miles an hour. It doesn't really tell you much. But this guy, since it's GPS based, will be extremely accurate and tell you what speed you're going, whether it's just a couple miles an hour or much faster on the top end. The other thing you want to check is make sure all of your wiring is correct on the lighting. Um, so if I turn on my uh, navigation lights, it uh, should light up all of the gauges. There we go. And that one lit up as well. Um, these are just the normal lights that come with the Faria gauges. Uh, you can also upgrade them to LED lights if you want them to be brighter or other colors. I'll put the links for everything down in the description below. If you have any questions, please leave them in the comments. Uh, like, share, and subscribe for more content like this. And see you next time.